If you're interested in a revolver for concealed carry, odds are you're looking for a lightweight, five shot snub nose like this Ruger LCR 357. These little guns have a lot going for them. They make great backup guns and they're really comfortable to carry all day when a larger or heavier gun might not be practical. But they come with a major downside. This small lightweight snub nose is one of the most difficult guns to master. And it's even harder to shoot well if you don't already have a lot of experience shooting revolvers. For a primary everyday carry gun, I much prefer something that's easier to shoot quickly and accurately. And for a revolver, that means it's gonna have to be slightly larger and slightly heavier, but I still want it to be a reasonable size to carry concealed. If you've been keeping up with our blog and our YouTube channel, then you know that mid-size self-defense revolvers have been kind of a pursuit of mine this year. Research and experimentation led me to a 3-inch Smith & Wesson Model 66 as my ideal carry revolver. But there are a handful of other revolvers that I checked out in the process. I've talked about most of them a little bit on our blog, and today I'm looking back at what I liked about each of them and why they didn't quite make the cut. At the beginning of this project, I established some criteria for what I would consider to be the ideal mid-size carry revolver. 20 to 30 ounces is kind of the sweet spot for weight, a two to three inch barrel, good sights, smooth trigger, or at least a trigger that could easily be tuned, a minimum of six round capacity, chambered in 38 Special or 357 Magnum, and aftermarket support. This is a quality that's severely underrated, but a carry gun is no good if I can't easily find holsters, speed loaders, replacement parts, and other accessories like that. Now keep in mind, these criteria are all theoretical. I didn't have any specific revolvers in mind when I made that list. I was just going based on what I thought would be ideal. So judged against these criteria, I picked out six possibilities, the Model 66 and five others. First is the Smith & Wesson Model 386 SCS, which stands for Scandium Frame Steel Cylinder. This is an L-frame revolver, so it's a larger medium size, but the lightweight Scandium alloy frame puts the weight at just 21.2 ounces. It's got a two and a half inch barrel, adjustable sights, and a seven shot cylinder, which is a nice bonus. And because it's a Smith & Wesson revolver, there are plenty of aftermarket options for things like sights and grips. On paper, this is a very attractive set of features for a mid-size carry revolver, and I really wanted to like this one. Unfortunately, that seven-shot cylinder is just too bulky for me. I always carry inside the waistband, and with a revolver, that puts the cylinder right underneath my belt. With an L-frame, that's just not comfortable and it's tough for me to conceal. Shooting the 386 was also awkward. I always have the sense that a gun this large just should not be this light. I had a hard time getting used to it, and the gun didn't really point naturally for me. It was like I had to fight to keep the sights aligned. It's not a bad revolver by any stretch, but it's just not for me. Next, I worked with the Smith & Wesson 3-inch barreled K-frames. The 66 is the model I eventually chose, but I also worked with this Model 64. It's pretty much identical to the 66, but it has fixed sights and is chambered for 38 Special only instead of 357. It's also much easier to find on the used market and a lot more affordable. The steel K-frames are the heaviest revolvers that I tried for this project, and they're actually a little over the 30 ounce limit that I set, but as a result, they are by far the easiest to shoot out of the bunch. However, the little trench style sights on the 64 were just too difficult to see. I even blacked out the rear sight and put some bright orange paint on the front sight, and that helped, but not enough. The big fiber optic on the 66 is much easier to track under recoil and through target transitions, and those adjustable sights weren't getting in my way at all, so it didn't make much sense to choose the 64 over the 66. But overall, it really is an excellent revolver, and if you're looking for a 3-inch K-frame, I know they can be hard to find, but the 64 is one of the easiest to track down. You know there really aren't that many mid-size revolvers on the market to begin with, and my idea of a mid-size revolver is actually a little smaller and lighter than a lot of what actually exists. So I knew if I wanted to keep this experiment going, I would have to compromise on some of my theoretical criteria a little bit. I didn't want to carry anything heavier than the K-frames, so I had to compromise on capacity. I started looking at some of the five-shot revolvers, but instead of going with the really super lightweight ones that are so popular, I stuck with the steel frames. And that of course led me to the Ruger SP-101. This tank of a snub nose is known for being robust and reliable, but it's also a little heavy for a five shot. It's 25 ounces, which means it's heavier even than a steel J-frame Smith & Wesson. 
but I actually like to think of that as an advantage. If you're going to use a snub nose as a primary carry gun in a belt holster, that extra weight is not a big inconvenience, but it will make the gun much easier to control. This is the Wiley Clap edition of the SP-101, so it's got these nice wood inlay rubber stocks and a set of Novak sights with a brass bead on the front, which is a huge improvement over the standard fixed sights. The SP-101 also has a reputation for having a good trigger. Now out of the box, most of them aren't great at all, and this one was no exception, but it was easy to improve with an aftermarket spring and a few minutes of lightly polishing the internals. Now it's got a better trigger than just about any other snub nose out there. After the K-frames, this SP-101 would be my first choice. It's only got five shots and it's not quite as easy to shoot, but it's not too far behind, and it's actually much better suited for a concealed carry compared to the larger K-frames. I couldn't end this project without trying out some Smith & Wesson J-frames, since historically they probably are the most popular carry guns of all time. So I picked up a Model 640 Pro. This is the ultimate evolution of the J-frame and probably the best production snub nose Smith & Wesson has ever made. It's got big Novak 3-dot night sights, a fluted barrel, a cylinder cut for moon clips, and a decent set of hard rubber stocks that cover the metal backstrap. It's also one of the few Smith & Wesson revolvers in current production that doesn't have an internal lock. Like all J-frames, it's got a really stiff trigger that makes the gun challenging to shoot well. I did install the Apex Tactical Spring Kit for J-frames, and that reduced the pull weight. Maybe not enough to say it's a good trigger, though. The 640 is slightly lighter and slimmer than the Ruger, and obviously it's much smaller than the K-frames, and if I were to carry a J-frame as a primary, this would be the one. But for me, the shootability is just not there. I don't feel like I'm getting enough of the potential benefits of shooting a steel frame revolver that would offset the inconvenience of carrying the extra weight. The 640 wasn't the only J-frame I tried. I also got a Model 60 Pro. It's got a 3-inch barrel, and I was hoping it might handle more like a medium-sized revolver. The Pro model has an adjustable rear sight and a tritium front sight, and instead of the standard rubber grips, it's got these very attractive wood grips that I absolutely hate. They're just too small for my hands, and I had a tough time getting a good grip on them, so I stuck the grips from the 640 on there, and that was a big improvement. But performance-wise, I really wasn't getting any advantage from that extra inch of barrel. I think a lot of that has to do with the sights. They are more usable than the typical fixed J-frame sights, but they're inferior to the sights on the 640 that have the white rings around the tritium dots. So in my opinion, the 640 Pro is the better of the two J-frames, and the sights are really the best out of any of the revolvers that I tried. But I'm a sucker for a smooth trigger, so if I were going to carry a five-shot snub nose on a belt holster, it would definitely be the SP-101. Ultimately, the Model 66 beat out all these other guns as the best mid-size carry revolver, at least for me. But they're all pretty good guns, they're worth considering, and, you know, take my advice with a grain of salt anyway, because I was just doing this as an experiment. I don't plan to carry the Model 66 every day long term, so if you prefer something lighter, that totally makes sense. Also, I know some of you are wondering why I didn't mention the Ruger GP100 or any Colt revolvers or something else you think I forgot. I've addressed some of that on our blog post today, so check out that link in the video description. <laughs>